Hello everyone, today we're going to be learning to do mathematics with units. So this is adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing any measurements that have units included. So before we do that, let's look at what units are. So we have two objects, a $5 bill and a nickel. If we write out the values of these objects, the $5 bill is worth $5, the nickel is worth $0.05. Cents. If we look at this numerically, it looks like they're worth the same amount. This object is worth 5. This one is also worth 5. The only difference comes from these words that follow the number. Dollars. Cents. These are called units. So a unit is a word that follows a number and gives more detail about its meaning. When you see dollars after a number, say $10, you immediately know that that number refers to an amount of money and the word dollars tells you how much money it refers to. For instance, cents also makes you think about an amount of money. However, we know that dollars are worth more than cents. So five dollars and five cents have different values even though they have the same number. This is what a unit does for us. So now let's say you reach into your pocket. You pull out a five dollar bill and a nickel. How much money do you have? The obvious answer is that you have $5.05, and you can just phrase it like this. However, in science, we're often very interested in getting everything down to one number as much as possible. So how do I take $5.05 and add them in a meaningful way? Well, it turns out that you can't, because you can only add or subtract measurements when they have the exact same units, dollars and cents, are not exactly the same. So we cannot perform this addition problem right now. We can, however, change one of these so that it looks like the other. Dollars and cents both measure money, and we know that one dollar is 100 cents. So we can change five dollars into 500 cents. Now, because our units are identical, 500 cents plus five cents is 505 cents. Notice that there are two parts to all of this. There's the number, and then there's the unit. And when we work an addition problem or a subtraction problem or a multiplication or a division, what you're really looking at doing is first doing the number part, 500 plus 5 equals 505. And then you do the unit part, cents plus cents. And as long as the units are identical, they remain the same in your answer. So cents plus cents equals cents. And now we put the two parts together and your answer is 505 cents. We can also go the other way with this. We know that uh, it takes 100 cents to make one dollar, so five cents would be 0 0.05 dollars. And now I can say five plus 0 0.05 is 5.05 dollars. Notice again that the units had to be identical and then in the answer, the units are the same as they were in the previous parts. To sum up our rules, we can say that measurements can only be added or subtracted if they have identical units, and when they are added or subtracted, the units do not change. So let's look at a couple practice problems to make sure we really know what we're doing. And let's start with 5 meters plus 3 meters. You add the numbers just like you normally would. 5 plus 3 would be 8 meters plus meters. Remember when we're adding units, the unit does not change. Meters plus meters should equal meters, so we would expect this to be 8 meters. With 90 milliliters minus 30 milliliters, we work the number part of the problem. 90 minus 30 equals 60. Milliliters minus milliliters is still milliliters, so this should be 60 milliliters. This one is more tricky. Notice that the units are not identical, so we cannot work this problem as is. But hours and minutes measure the same quantity. They're both measuring time. So we can change hours into minutes or minutes into hours. 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour. So we can say that 6 hours plus 0.25 hours would be 6.25 hours. Or, knowing that an hour is 60 minutes, 
six hours must then be 360 minutes plus 15 minutes. So our answer could either be 6.25 hours or 375 minutes. But notice we have to change it so that the units are identical before we can add those. Finally, the problem 90 minutes minus 30 kilograms. Our units are not the same, so we can't work this problem. But notice they don't even measure the same quantity. Minutes measures time, kilogram measures mass. And there is no physical meaning to time minus mass. We can't change these to be alike. This problem is actually not possible. The rules for multiplication and division are just as simple, but in a slightly different way. When multiplying or dividing measurements, the units are multiplied or divided just like the numbers. So we've got a few practice problems here, and let's see what this means. Let's start with 5 kilograms times 3 meters. We do the number part just like we'd expect. 5 times 3 would be 15. Kilograms times meters, however, there's no real way to simplify that. So in our answer, we just say that this is 15 kilogram meters. Notice this dot that is a multiplication symbol written between the units to show that these two units are multiplied. So again, the proper answer to this would be 15 kilogram meters. And we write this with that dot as a multiplication sign between them. 3 meters times 7 meters. Again, the numbers are just what you'd expect. 3 times 7 is 21. Meters times meters would be meter times meter. But there's a shortcut here. We can use what's called exponential notation and simplify this as meters squared. So we would say this is 21 square meters. That little 2 just means that we take whatever the exponent, 2 is the exponent here, whatever that is attached to times itself that many times. So meter squared just means meter times meter. Now let's look at some division problems. 9 miles divided by 3 hours. The number part's pretty straightforward. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now we need to look at what miles divided by hours would be. And turns out we write it as miles divided by hours. Now there's also another way to write this that you'll see more often, and that's to write this as a fraction. So you would probably see this written as 3 miles on top divided by hours. So again, whatever the first one is goes on top divided by, and then whatever that one is goes on bottom. There's also a particular way we read this. We read this as 3 miles per hour, which you've probably heard before. The meaning of that is just it's a number of miles divided by a number of hours. Finally, let's look at 4 grams divided by 3 milliliters. 4 divided by 3 is going to be 1.3 repeating, so we can round that off to 1.34. Grams divided by milliliters would just be written as grams divided by milliliters, or using our fraction notation, we could say grams per milliliter. And that is all there is to it.